Hi guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we are talking chicken wings, sports bar style buffalo hot wings. Can you make them at home? Heck yeah, you can. And this is a very important recipe to highlight this week because we have the big Taylor Swift show coming up. And I think they're gonna have a uh, football side show to go along with that. Regardless, it is go time for our man caves. And if you have a good man cave, you need to be able to make sports bar style chicken wings. I'm gonna show you how to do that using both a deep fryer and a Dutch oven, two of the main ways to do it. We're going to deep fry the chicken wings. And it's actually amazing to me because this recipe is incredibly easy and incredibly simple and it produces results that are almost exactly like what you get in an actual sports bar. Um, online, you will often see recipes with different kinds of seasoning mixes, rubs, brines. Those seem to be mostly geared towards air fryers or oven fried wings. We're going old school deep frying with these chicken wings. Now at a high level, this is a very simple and easy recipe. We're gonna to need to be careful because we are deep frying and we'll go through some safety tips as we compare and contrast deep fryer versus Dutch oven. But what I do is just get pre-cut chicken wings, fresh chicken uh, from my local grocery store. And usually they come eight wings to a pack, four drumettes and four flats. And I call that one order. And you simply dry them with paper towels and then deep fry them. And I usually go with uh, peanut oil and then fry them until they are A, up to temperature internally and B, the color crunch texture that you like. And then all you do is hit them with some pre-made buffalo wing sauce. I like Frank's Red Hot. There are other brands or you can make your own. And even though this is kind of a simple 101 get started with chicken wings type recipe, it produces wings that are remarkably similar to what you get in an actual sports bar. And as a bonus, there's no toothless uh, meth head out on parole cooking your food. Unless you are a toothless meth head out on parole, in which case I really didn't mean to offend you. Now we are going to be deep frying. And in the case of the Dutch oven, deep frying with searing hot oil over an open flame on a gas cooktop. Rule number one here, my first professional frying tip is don't burn your house down and kill yourself. <laughs> Kidding aside, deep frying can be dangerous, but if you pay attention, probably the most important thing, and follow the safety rules and a few tips, everything should be okay. Now I mentioned that I use peanut oil. One thing I like about peanut oil is it has a relatively high smoking point. Um, up in that 450 degree or higher range for most of your refined peanut oils. We're gonna fry these chicken wings, start them out between 350 and 375. And that should give us a good 75 degree cushion between our frying temperature and the smoking point of that peanut oil that should keep us out of trouble. Um, along those lines, um, the, um, the deep fryer here, this is a T-Fowl Easy Clean. It has a mark on the inside, a fill line, it shows you how much oil to put in. And it also has, importantly, an adjustable thermostat. This model here and lots of different models, they top out at about 375. What I like about that is when you preheat the oil in the deep fryer, once it gets up to the temperature, if I set it at 375, once it gets there, the, uh, the uh, thermostat kicks it off. So it will not continue to heat above that range, it kind of keeps you out of trouble. And further, once you add the food to the hot oil, the oil temperature is going to drop. I like having that automatic um, thermostat. It will kick the uh, burner back on or the heating element back on and keep that oil up to temperature and you don't have to fiddle with things, adjust things back and forth. Now for the Dutch oven, I like to fill these no more than half full. And the reason for that is when you are preheating oil in a Dutch oven and you look at it, you can't really tell that it's hot. Once you add food, it's like stepping or sitting down in a bathtub, the water level is gonna rise. Add food to the Dutch oven, the oil level is going to rise. 
and I don't care how well you dry your food, you shouldn't put wet food in a deep fryer. I don't care how dry it is. Food is made up of a lot of water. There's water in the food itself. There's going to be bubbling and steaming and you don't want the oil level to rise up so much that you run any risk of overflow and that hot oil getting down by that gas flame. Now let's do a little experiment. I have some peanut oil here and I have a soon to be lit match. Lit match, peanut oil. So we need to be careful, but we don't need to be in a complete panic. This is not napalm, it's not gasoline. We need to uh, pay attention and be careful, but if we follow the steps, everything will be a-okay. Now, should something bad happen when you are cooking in a Dutch oven, normally these Dutch ovens have very heavy lids. If that were to flame up, you can put the lid on there. Um, you can keep, probably good advice regardless, a uh, little fire extinguishers, fire blankets. There are a lot of things you can do to uh, kind of mitigate any potential disaster risk. But I think as long as you follow the steps, everything's going to be just fine. And I think probably the most important um, safety rule when you are deep frying is to pay attention. Um, set a timer when you're preheating your oil. Don't go into another room and get on the computer and get distracted. You got to pay attention. Uh, right after that is you need a good thermometer. Now for the Dutch ovens, you can use a candy thermometer, which kind of clips onto the side to keep track of your oil temperature. Crucial to know your oil temperature. Or what I often do is use one of these instant read thermometers. This one is a, a Thermapen 1. You can use it to test the temperature of the oil. Also good with this one is you can use it to temp the chicken. Make sure your chicken is up to temperature. Now some quick equipment recommendations here as far as frying and capacity. If you're doing one order of wings, something like a five and a half quart Dutch oven uh, works really well for um, more than one order at a time. I like the seven and nine quarts. Um, at the high end, I like Le Crusades and Stobes, who doesn't? Uh, moderately priced, I like Lodges. And in the value end, um, I've had a Tramontina, which I've used for about 20 years now. So a lot, of, a lot of choices there for Dutch ovens. If someone were to ask me what one deep fryer should I get for a home countertop unit, I like the Tefal Easy Clean model. I have been recommending this one for about four years now. Mine is still going strong. It's got good capacity. It's got good oil storage. You can store the oil on board. And most importantly, an adjustable thermostat. And I will of course put links below should you want to check out any of this equipment further. So we want to bring that oil temperature up to 375. It usually takes me about eight minutes or so with a, a Dutch oven on the stove top and on the, uh, the deep fryer, you actually don't have to worry about it because the thermostat will let you know when it's up to temperature, usually 10 minutes or so. Add the wings, and with the deep fryer, it's easy to put them in a basket and lower that basket down in. With the Dutch ovens, you don't want to drop them in from high up. You don't want to splash the pot and get searing hot oil all over the place. So lay them out gently, one by one. And now we are off and cooking. Now the temperature of the oil will drop precipitously when you add the chicken. Um, on the deep fryer, you don't have to worry about adjusting the thermostat because it will kick back on. The unit will kick back on and bring the oil temperature back up. It will rebound. With the uh, Dutch ovens on the stove top, you need to monitor it. And lots of times if you start out at 375, it can drop down to 290 or so. And you might want to turn your flame up just a little bit to help that rebound process. But you have to keep checking every couple of minutes because that oil temperature, as it rebounds, it's going to keep coming up and it's not going to stop. So you're going to have to adjust that flame back down once you get up into your frying zone. Usually after eight minutes or so, the wings are up to temp internally. And then you simply have to wait until they are the color and texture and crunch that you like before they are done. Uh, this is a personal preference here. You don't want to go too pale and flabby on your chicken skin. You also don't want to cook them so long that they are shoe leather. 
Um, it's all a personal preference. I like mine with a little bit of brown and crunch on there. Mine usually end up going 14, 15 minutes or so. After which you pull them out to a, I like to use a stainless steel mixing bowl and some of that pre-made buffalo wing sauce. Um, I warm mine up in the microwave. You don't want to take a bottle right out of a cold fridge and dump that on your nice steaming hot wings. And some people like them drier, some people like them wetter. Somewhere around three quarters of a cup of sauce for an eight wing order seems to be a good starting point for me. Now there are methods on the internet you can read that are a little bit more in depth where people take the wings out, they might double fry them, they might stick them in the freezer for a while before the final frying, um, different things to add to the wings to make them a little crunchier. For a basic Man Cave 101 wings recipe, I have found that those other steps are not really necessary and the wings I turn out are every bit as good as real deal sports bar wings without those extra steps. Now bonus points here, if you plate these nicely, got a little dipping sauce on the side and something green just for effect. Oh, and absolutely delicious sports bar quality buffalo wings at home. Um, if your desire is to turn your man cave into a sports bar in your basement, this recipe puts you one step closer to man cave gourmet food for your sports bar. Uh, give it a try. Be careful if you deep fry, of course. Let me know what you think. I think you will be amazed at the results this simple recipe produces in producing wings that are very, very close to what you get in an actual sports bar. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.